Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at our third type of particle accelerator, which is the cyclotron. So let's get into it. Now a cyclotron clearly has a different shape to a linear accelerator, which we saw in the previous theory video, but they work in a very similar way. So it says here that a cyclotron consists of two D-shaped hollow metal structures called Ds placed in a vacuum. So this picture shows you the two Ds here. And it says between the two metal Ds, charged particles, for example protons, are accelerated due to the electric field produced by a large potential difference that is applied to the Ds. The particles do not accelerate when inside the Ds. So just like for the linear accelerator, we said that the particles do not accelerate when they're inside the tubes, the hollow metal tubes, but they do accelerate between the tubes. And it's similar here for the Ds. We're saying that the particles themselves do not accelerate when they're inside the two Ds, but they do accelerate across the gap between the Ds and the middle. And that is due to the potential difference that has been applied between the plates and therefore the electric field that has been set up between the two Ds. And it also says that inside the Ds, the path of the charged particles is changed by a magnetic field. And that's where the particles are getting their circular pattern from. They're being deflected within the Ds due to the magnetic field. Now remember the whole point of a particle accelerator is to increase the speed of the particles. So in this example, we've got a source of protons in the middle and the protons are being emitted from here and then being accelerated across the gap until they reach this first D where they're then bending slightly and they're then being accelerated across the gap here and then curving around in this direction and so on and so forth. So the electrons are going to keep accelerating at this point and then changing direction due to the magnetic field within the Ds. And you can see the radius of the curved path that is traced out by the proton beam is getting bigger and bigger and that's happening as the particles get faster and faster until eventually they reach the required speed and exit the accelerator. It says that for each successive crossing of the gap between the Ds, the particles will need to accelerate in opposite directions each time. This can be achieved by using a high frequency alternating supply to change the polarity of the Ds, which in turn changes the direction of the electric field across the gap. If the electric field direction was the same at all times, then the particles would not continue to move. So this is very similar to why we need a high frequency alternating supply for linear accelerators as well. And instead of changing the polarity of the hollow tubes, in this case we're talking about the Ds. So we're trying to change the polarity of the Ds, which in turn changes the direction of the electric field. So for example, you can see when the protons are being emitted here, they're moving towards this right hand side D first. So that means this plate must be negatively charged to begin with, and this plate on the left is positively charged to begin with. And that means that the protons are being repelled away from this D and attracted towards this D, which is why they're moving this way. But then once they've reached this plate and have changed direction due to the magnetic field, then the polarity of the sign of charge on the Ds is going to change due to the high frequency alternating supply. So this D will then become positively charged to repel the protons away, and this D will become negatively charged to attract the electrons. And that's going to happen until the electrons reach this point here, at which point the magnetic field is going to curve the protons again, and then the same process will repeat, so the polarity will keep changing. So in order for the protons in this case to keep accelerating, we need the alternating supply to change the polarity of the Ds. Otherwise, the protons would reach this plate and then wouldn't move any further if there was no further changing of the polarity. Here we have a simulation which can help you visualize what the particles are doing when they're traveling within the Ds and between the Ds. So if we click play here, you'll see the particle travel straight when it's between the Ds and then it curves or changes direction when it's within the Ds. And that's due to the magnetic field in the Ds, remember. And you'll also notice the particle speeds up when it's between the Ds. And here's another simulation where we can look at how the high frequency alternating supply changes the polarity of the Ds and causes the particles to accelerate across the gap between the Ds. Here we're accelerating protons, so if I click start, you'll see the polarity of the Ds continually changing back and forth from positively charged to negatively charged, and that's so that the protons will accelerate when they're between the Ds in this gap here. And notice how the particles are changing direction when they're within the Ds and they're accelerating between the Ds. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.